Day one. My community voted for extinction and here I was, ready to try and take on a titan by the end of these hundred days. I spawned in for this notable adventure in the sanctuary, a supposedly safe starting area. I started gathering some fiber and berries when I noticed these metal roly guys getting a little close for comfort. I couldn't remember if they would attack me or not, so I grabbed a quick drink and headed the other way. Punched a tree, grabbed some stones, and made our first pickaxe. Used that to grab some flint so I could make a spear and hatchet, then suited up with some cloth armor. Named my chibi noglin Gizmo. Stopped to eat some berries. Oops, not those berries. Grabbed a quick drink and then leveled up. Thought about taming this horse, but forgot you have to be level 10 first. Then I found this galley that those roly metal ball things must have killed. Then hacked up this tree and got started on some temporary housing. Made some storage boxes and placed those but managed to get myself stuck in the process. Wiggled around and got out without breaking anything. Then headed out to kill some things for high. These dodos were pretty tempting, but I've been challenged not to kill any dodos for these hundred days. So we killed this dillo instead. Night never came, but we continued gathering materials into day two, when this terror bird decided to come by our house. Seriously? Terror bird. Got too close to this diplo. Oh my God. And the dodos were just mocking me at this point. <laughs> Found some crystals and made myself a spyglass, just in time to spot this Rex getting way too close for comfort. Stopped by our little thatch box so we could place some mortar and pestle and start some narcotics. I found another horse and I was level 10 now, so I figured why not tame it? It did not agree. As I slept off my bad decision, the Rex came by to start eating this Brano right by my base. Come on, Brano, you can do it. Mm. It's going, Brano. Don't think he can do it. Brano, you Ooh. can do it. Yeah, no, he can't. He finished off the Brano and headed our way when I decided we might just move. I was still a bit worried about that terror bird I had seen earlier, but turns out something else already killed it. We took its hide and made some bolas just in case as I started looking for another place for a temporary base. I dropped carefully off this ledge as I was looking for water when I realized I had made a grave mistake. There were raptors down here. But thankfully, this Fioma made for some good bait, and I made my escape. So far, my second day had been spent running from things and getting thirsty. So we got down to it and found a new spot to start building. I got down some basics and then headed out to gather some materials for a forge. I broke all my tools, but we finally got some metal started. Then I spent the entire rest of the day gathering metal from river rocks. Put down a bed and cooking pot early day three and then crafted some hide armor. Found this guy and harvested him for some metal and oil. And then I did not kill this dodo, but I did take its hide. Made some trank arrows and then for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to tame this Anki first. It was going pretty well until this beautiful white T-Rex came along and ate him. But that's okay, we found a Mo Shops. I fed her a tinto berry and named her Jill, and then took her out to gather all the things. Most shops are pretty great because they'll gather berries and fiber, so I spent the rest of my day making narcotics, berry soup, and hanging out with this super cute little sheep. The next morning, I discussed with Jill whether or not we should add this level 50 Anki to our team, and she approved, so I shot it with trank arrows until it fell asleep, and then fed it some tasty berries. While that was taming up, I grabbed some wood and added some walls to our house. Grabbed some more wood, added more walls and some ceilings too. And then grabbed some more wood, did a bit of parkour before I finished up our house and added a smithy so we could finally make some metal tools. I got so into building I almost forgot about the Anki, but it was all tamed up and they're waiting on me. I named him Lars and then we headed home to watch the sun. Well, there is no sunset here. But now it's day five and we need metal. I wasn't high enough level to make an Anki saddle yet, so I hopped on Jill and we headed to the nearest metal nodes. For some reason, I thought the Anki would gather metal on Wander, but it didn't. Then this beautiful 125 blue and green Terra landed nearby, and I had to have it. So I bowled it and started shooting it with Trank Arrows, when Lars came out of nowhere to show me his disapproval of this new team member. I finally whistled him passive, then shot the Terra in the wing instead, hoping it wouldn't kill it. It went to sleep, and I fed it some meat, just in time for this defense unit to wander over. I led Lars away and then was heading back to deal with the defense unit, but it was too late. It ate my Terra and now it was headed for Lars too. We were gonna have to fight it. I whistled Lars to aggressive and then shot it with every arrow I had. Then made some more arrows and shot it till my bow broke. I thought I was gonna have to go in with my spear when Lars finally killed it and this compy started attacking me instead. I figured, well, at least I could harvest its metal and oil, but this Meganura ate him first. Things calmed down a bit and I went to look for Jill. Mo shops are useful, but a bit cowardly and she ran from the fight. No worries, she was just up the hill. I gathered up some metal myself and loaded it into Lars, then we started to head home. 
I made it back safely and then took Jill out to gather some berries and plants. I went to check this Terra's level when something started attacking. And due to my recent switch from Xbox, in my panic, I completely forgot the controls. And that was that for Jill. I dismounted and ran away, but there was no escape for her. I ended this sad, sad day mourning her loss and taking all her things. Finally made myself a crossbow on day six and headed out to find another Terra. Saw this one and thought I might tame it, but everything was trying to kill me. I bullied these two raptors and killed them first, and then we were back by the old base with our friend the Rex. But we were tougher since we last saw this Rex. I was a level 30 survivor now. I found a good spot up on this bridge to shoot him from, and then we faced off. I used a ton of arrows, but eventually took him down. After defeating the Rex, the next day I was free to tame that Terra. I bullied it, knocked it out, fed it some meat, and then spent some time killing things while I waited for it to tame up. I named him Bill and then took him back to base before we headed out to find some chitin and keratin so we could make him a sap. I killed all the turtles I could find, hacked up their shells, and then gathered some fiber before heading back to base to make a saddle for Bill. I spent most of day eight exploring, but I did find this little monkey. I snuck up on her and fed her some berries and then named her, well, Funky. Day nine, and I really needed something else to gather berries. If I was going to take out a titan at the end of this hundred days, I needed some narco berries so I could tame more dinos. I spotted this awesome red level 80, set Bill to passive, and then started to shoot it. It didn't take long before it was running, and I knocked it out. I named her Big Red and spent the rest of the day gathering narco berries. We made it to day 10, our first milestone of sorts, and spent most of the day out killing everything I could find with Big Red. By the end of the day, she was pretty happy with herself. Did pretty much the same thing the next day with Bill instead, but he got tired, so we took a break to go exploring. That's when I hit the wrong key and this. I lucked out and wasn't too high up, so I survived the fall. Quickly checked my surroundings and then whistled for Bill. We got back on the road when this meteor shower hit. I knew I was safe in the sanctuary, but it made me nervous anyway. I spent most of day 12 gathering materials with Lars and making some spark powder. Despite being such a low level, Lars was a lot tougher than I thought he'd be. I smelted some metal and then used my charcoal to make some gunpowder. Now we're talking. I spent all of the next day gathering materials, making dino gates so that I could make an RG trap. On day 14, I found this level 90 RG and a perfect spot to set my trap, but by the time I was done, it was too late. These defense units had already killed my RG, but Bill and I took our revenge and we killed them back. Things were looking up on day 15 when we found this 145 red Tyrannodon. I knocked it out, tamed it, and named it Ruby. Then we headed home and killed everything in sight until this Microraptor knocked me off. Killed it too, and then got back to killing things so I could level up Ruby when I realized that I could unlock Cryopods. They pretty much work like Pokeballs and would make life so much easier. So I immediately headed out to the Wastelands to gather some corrupted nodules to use for Polymer. Then I took it all to the city terminal, ready to build some Cryopods. Well, never mind. Apparently you can't build them here. A quick Google search informed me that the best way to get cryopods on extinction is from the orbital supply drops that fall in the wasteland. I was hoping to get cryopods before we moved to another location, but it was going to be a bit before we were ready to take on an OSD. Instead, we loaded up everything we owned and made a dino train. The journey really wasn't very interesting, and we spent most of it just waiting online. Made it to the new base place at day 18, got down some basics, and then spent the rest of the day exploring. Spent the next day trying to tame this red beaver. Knocked it out, and then got distracted by this 130 otter and tried to tame it. As I was heading back with a dead fish for the otter, I realized there was a sarco eating the beaver. I quickly hopped on Ruby and then killed the gator, but it was too late for our beaver. But that's okay, I needed an otter anyway. I tossed dead fish at it until it eventually became our friend, and then named it Nugget and took it home. The rest of the day was well spent, building all the things we had at our old base. Gathered some nearby metal the next morning and smelted that along with my toes. Made some berry sandwiches and then headed out to find something to tame. There weren't any more beavers, but I did find this level 75 rex. Not the highest level, but it would do for now. I spent the rest of day 20 flying from spot to spot, shooting it with trank arrows, including this long shot. Broke my crossbow early day 21, switched to bow, and then almost got eaten by a saber-toothed tiger before finally knocking it out. I was pretty determined not to let anything eat this one when I noticed this Alpha Rex just over the hill. I stayed nearby and got this obsidian while I waited for it to tame up. 
and then didn't bother to name it because I just wanted to get it as far away from that Alpha Rex as possible. For some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to tame this 135 Roly Poly with my bow and arrow, but my Rex tried to eat it, so we headed home. Most of day 22 was spent traveling back home with our new Rex and killing everything inside. Made it home safely with our new bodyguard and named her Orexa. Spent all of day 23 at home leveling up our gear. Finally unlocked trink darts and made a long neck rifle. Made a fabricator for the base we were eventually going to build. And suited up with some flak armor. I really wanted to find a beaver before I started building, so I set off on day 24 with my new long neck rifle and trank darts to find one. After searching most of the day, I gave up and went back to try to tame this Stoidicarus. I'd be needing lots of stone for this new base too, but it rolled up into a ball and I didn't want to waste my darts, so I gave up and punched it in the face. Never mind that. The next day, I found this level 50 RG, and it was right by our trap. I let it in the trap first try, but didn't shut the doors in time. My second attempt was successful, and I started to shoot it with trank arrows when this unlucky Terra got in the way. It wasn't long before I knocked her out, fed her some meat, and took her home. Day 26, and I got a saddle on the RG, but couldn't think of a name. Then spent the entire rest of the day making more trank darts and looking unsuccessfully for a beaver. Well, beaver or no beaver, I wanted to build a base. Gosh darn it. So I spent all of day 27 gathering materials and putting down our foundation. I was still building and tired of gathering fiber, so on day 28, I found this beautiful blue Moshops and named him Jack. Construction continued into day 29 with a fabricator, more wood, a feeding trough, side port, stairs, more stone, a gate frame, and a gate, a bunch of storage, and then finally some dino. Day 30 started with some more building, and then we took Lars out for a metal run. It was all going well until this nearby megatherium killed some bugs and got all angry. I tried to run away, but Lars was way too slow. I called in the RG to help fight it, but things were way worse than I thought. Making a run for it seemed my only option. I'm not in hardcore mode, but I wanted to at least try to survive these 100 days without dying. Lars didn't make it, but I went back to try to whistle off our new RG. Together, we successfully escaped and then returned to get what was left from Lars. It was a sad return that evening without him, but I just told the others we left him at the dino spa. Spent all of day 31 safely at home, demolishing all of our temporary base, making forges, and crafting more trait darts. Ran some stone water lines to our base on day 32, then headed out the next day to look for some more beavers. No luck, but I did come across this cool looking red tipped 115 Anki. So I knocked it out and gave it some berries when I noticed this RG. I figured why not tame it too, so I trapped it, knocked it out, and then went back to check on that Anki. You've got to be kidding me. My beautiful red-tipped Anki got eaten by this Dillo. Oh well, at least I've got this other RG. Provided this Alpha Rex over here doesn't get any closer. He finally tamed up, and on day 34, we made it home. Named him Rio and my other RG, Jewel. They made fast friends, and we had our first fertilized egg. Put down a cooking pot real quick and made some berry burgers. Then finished the day by painting Rio's head blue. Went looking again for a beaver on day 35 when I found this jackpot of metal right under my base, along with some beavers that had been there the entire time. So I spent the rest of the day chopping rocks and building a taming pen. On day 36, I grabbed the highest level beaver I could find in my newly discovered pond, dropped it in the taming pen, and knocked it out. If you didn't know, beavers are really great at gathering wood. Plus, wood has reduced weight in their inventory, and their saddle acts as a smithy. The following day, I put down a new forge and grabbed that 135 roly-poly we tried to tame earlier to bring back to our taming pen. It needed to heal more before I could tame it. Too bad I didn't have a snow owl yet. Spent all of day 38 gathering wood on Kevin Levin while I waited for the Doodigris to heal, then dumped it all in the forges to make a ton of charcoal for gunpowder. Day 39 and I really needed an anchor. Found this guy and brought him back to base. Still had the Doodigris in our taming pen, so I just dropped him nearby and did it the old fashioned way. Set all the dinos to passive and started shooting. I didn't plan well, so after I knocked it out, I had to grab some berries with Big Red fed it some medro berries, and then headed down to check on the doodickers. Double taming hasn't worked out so far for us, but I felt pretty good about this one. So I knocked out the doodick, and then fed it some berries before going back to check on our Anki. He was up, and I named him Larry. Spent some time doing some things around the house before I headed back to check on the doodick. Not yet, still sleeping, but I just unlocked a Rex saddle. Time to take a Rexa out on a meat run. By the end of the day, our new friend was finally done taming, so I took it home and named it Curly. Day 40 was a bit grindy, but also very satisfying. 
I spent all day gathering stone and metal with our new dinos, and then took Curly out to gather some element dust too. You can carry them with an RG and they'll auto gather light posts and stones, but it's a little bit finicky, so I ended up getting off and riding him instead. Day 41 was a big day. We went out to try our first OSD. I immediately damaged our own tech force field. Rio handled all the corrupted Dillos and Terras like a champ. Stegos were a bit tougher, but still no problem. The heat, on the other hand, was another story. Before I realized it, my health was already down to half and dropping fast. I took off some of my flat gear for a moment and we persevered. Next time I'd have to remember to bring Nugget along. Success! We had completed our first OSD, but no time to celebrate. If I didn't get out of the wasteland soon, I was going to die. I grabbed everything and then dropped all the rocks before heading back to the safety of the sanctuary. Cut it close, but we made it okay. I got this apprentice pike and some other stuff I'll probably never really use, but I finally had cryo gloves and plenty of corrupted nodules to make some air conditioners and a fridge. After all that excitement, I spent all of the next day at home just building and finishing up our main base. Construction lasted through to the following morning, then we took Rio out for some levels and to look for another drop. No luck finding another drop, but I was able to unlock the Indy Forge. I know what I'll be doing tomorrow, spending some quality time gathering metal with Larry. Got that metal smelting back at base, and then found another drop. Blue is the easiest of the supply drops and seems to mostly just spawn Dillos, Terra, and Stego. Rio was a lot tougher now and even handled this Rex that wandered in with ease. I collected my prizes, which included a full stack of hard poly and 38 stone foundations. I really wish I had gotten these before I did all that building the other day. All of day 46 was spent moving our base out of the stone age. Got down a generator and some wiring so I could put up our fridges. One for cryopods and one for all the random food stuff from these drops. Then took Curly out to grab some crystals so I could make a chem bench. Making narcotics was going to be so much easier now. I had plenty of cryopods now, so the next day I headed to the underground forest to get a gotcha. Found one pretty quickly, but these raptors really wanted to eat it. No big deal though, Ruby and I fought them off with ease. Then found the same gotcha getting chased by another set of raptors. Killed them off too, and then chopped some rocks to feed the gotcha. But he was in a bad mood and didn't want it. While he was calming down, I found this nearby 150 female who was happy to eat everything I dropped. I wanted two pairs, so I tamed up one more female and then headed back to get the first male we found. Then tamed him up too and found one more before crowing them all up and heading back to base on day 48. The gotchas were gotten and now I needed a snow owl. Their pellets give gotchas a boost so they'll drop better crystals. I was pretty excited to spot this male 140 first thing. So I went ahead and made the same trap I used for RGs. It didn't work. I worked into the night building more gates, but it was too late. It was so sad. Something else had already killed it. I continued the search into day 49 when I found this beauty. It was a level 75, and for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to tame it out in the open. <laughs> It might have been a bit of a mess, but in the end I was successful. It took almost the entire day, but I had my first snow out. Now hurry up and get in the cryopod before this giga eats you. It was chasing after this gas bag nearby just as I finished taming. I really wanted to get a man of armor while I was at the snow globe, so I spent the night setting up this amazing Captain Fat Dog trap. They were all too busy fighting with mammoths though, so we gave up and headed home. Named the new snow owl Fiona, and then spent the rest of the day just chilling and celebrating the fact that I'd made it all the way to day 50 without dying. After all the excitement at the snow globe, I spent day 51 at home gathering berries for narcotics and more berry food. Completely forgot I had a chem bench though. Probably should have used that for the narcotics. Day 52 was mostly just me placing all these rails and pillars. I wasn't sure about it at first, but I think I'm really starting to like this base. Gathered some metal and then expanded this platform for an 
Indie Forge. We'll be smelting metal for days. Now. now that I had my forge up, it was time to start gathering some things for an enforcer. I had the metal smelting, so I took Rio out to kill some shiny things to gather oil. Also ran into this Alpha Raptor, which Rio dealt with no problem. Already had all the element dust we had gathered from light posts with Curly, so I picked a blueprint and went to the nearest city terminal to craft. Yeah, you're the best. I decided I'd just leave the name and call it M84. I took it out for some killing when I forgot about the Sarko death row. That's okay. I escaped and M handled it like a pro. Stopped back by base to grab some element for it to eat and then went out for more killing. Got a few levels and then I remembered that it was really easy to paint these bad boys. Yes, please. I turned it black and blue and then spent the rest of the day feeding the gotchas. On day 56, I cryoed up Rio and we headed to the desert dome. I wanted to find a Velonosaur to tame. Something over level 100 would be idea, but apparently the desert was quite the dangerous place. I went ahead and switched over to Rio so that we'd be a little bit safer. I really didn't want to lose Ruby. I searched all through the night and then found this level 105 the next morning. I killed all the dangerous things nearby and then made this stupid trap that never really worked at all. I ended up sort of just shooting it and then flying around until this happened. Then I decided I should probably be more careful. So I ended up using my trap as a shield of sorts until I finally put it on the run and knocked it out. Whoa, Katarina. Then named it Katarina before I remembered it was a male. Eh, oh well. Then this happened. I don't really want to talk about it, but it was my own fault. Bruh. No. Headed back to get my stuff and look, it just wasn't my day. Something, let me on. No, no. Run! Jeez, oh my gosh. Alright, come on, Bill. Let's go home. It's enough adventuring for today. Thought for day 58 we'd just stay safe in the sanctuary, so I took Katarina out for a ride when I remembered I had broken all my armor. Then resumed our peaceful ride around the sanctuary. It was really some great therapy. Got back to base and then found our first glowing gotcha crystal. It was a journeyman pick. I'll take it. Spent the rest of the day out back, using all those foundations we got to build a platform for some air conditioners. It was time to hatch our first egg. Not the highest level or the prettiest color, but it was still so cute. I just hatched one to start so that I could test our settings out before we hatched any more. Went out the next day looking for a higher level RG when I found this Christmas colored beauty. I was figuring my best bet to be the Titan Solo by the end of these hundred days was probably an RG army versus the Desert Titan. So I led it back to my trap with Ruby before leading off this Rex to kill it first. Ruby spun through it like butter and we headed back to knock out our new RG. But this trike was just not having it. I think I angered it when I was fighting the Rex, so it followed me back to my trap and started attacking. Headed back to finish up the tame when these roly metal guys decided to join in on the fun. It was a rough fight, but Ruby managed to finish them off. I was pretty relieved to finally get it in a cryopod and take it home. Named it Italia, thanks to a suggestion from my Discord. The link's in the description. Spent most of the next day taking Italia out on a killing spree. Got plenty of levels and then headed back home to open some gotcha crystals. Didn't get much, but better than nothing. Went looking for a higher level Rex on day 61 when I found this 140 chasing a gas bag. I found a good spot to start shooting it from until it got bored. Then I ended up having to chase it all over the place. Spent the entire day until I was out of darts and headed home to grab some more. I wasn't far from home, so I quickly made my way back and it wasn't too many shots more before she was out. Not sure why, but I named her Cruella. Just gathered metal with Larry on day 63, then went to fight the Alpha Rex on day 64. Let's go. Surprisingly, it was so easy, I sort of felt like I was cheating. Yes. Didn't get much out of it, but we flew home pretty full of ourselves anyway. With our newfound confidence, we headed out and found a red drop. Blue drops had been so easy so far, I figured, why not? It's only the third level of the four drops. Holy cow, where did you guys come from? Yeah, no way. It got really hard, really fast, and I wasn't about to lose this new RG. Okay, so red, red is a no-go. I wished out on that and went for this baby blue drop instead. I took home all my goodies and then went back out the next day to try for this yellow drop instead. It was the level just above blue, but the spinal was making me nervous. Hey, 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 stop that. I managed to take it out, but it wasn't long before all the dinos broke through the sheet. Stop it. My treasure alone. Things were starting to look rough for Italia, so I switched over to Rio. I thought things were going okay when I took a quick rest on this rock but the Carnos apparently could climb up it anyway. 
I tried to fight, but used up too much stamina before trying to fly away. And that was that for Rio. It was a sad, slow fall, and after that, there was really nothing I could do. He died a quick death, and I made a run for it. I ran and ran until I thought I was far enough away. Oh my gosh. Oh, I shouldn't have stopped running. Don't stop running. Yeah, I failed. Flash, I know. No, 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 no. Whoop! Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. My stamina ran out, so I laid down to regen it faster when this raptor jumped on top of me. Oh, it's what? Somehow, I survived and managed to get on the run again. Running again. Running. Running. Please get stuck behind the rocks. Oh my gosh! After all that excitement, I spent day 68 putting down an indie cooker and just cooking up some new berry sandwiches. Also introduced Jewel to our new RG Italia. Oh yeah. Day 69 was looking up though when I found this 150 Valona, but I forgot to bring an RG and Ruby really wasn't handling the desert well. So I headed back home to grab Italia when I spotted this beautiful blue and red wreck on my way back. It was a level 135 and I couldn't pass it up, despite this corrupted Giga that was hanging around. But I managed to lead it away and knock it out, right next to all these cap rows. Yes. Oh no 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 no. I named it Marvel and then headed back to the Desert Dome to get that 150 Valona. Oh no no no. I forgot to set Italia to passive, but I was able to whistle him back before he killed it. After that, it was a fairly easy tame. Yes. Named him Spike and took him home. Spent all of day 71 smelting metal and making gunpowder, then headed out on day 72 to try out another yellow drop. This one was still pretty tough, but definitely going much better than our last attempt. Did lots of spam healing between rounds using the RG's rapid regeneration buff. It was really close, and I thought for sure they were going to blow it up before we could defend it. But this time, I was successful. This corrupted Terra tried to attack while I was picking up my prizes, but I managed to get out of there safely with a new pair of Mastercraft black pants and an apprentice pump shotgun. Made it back to base on day 73 to dump our stuff, did some more RG breeding, and then headed back to the snow globe to find one of those mammoth fighting mannas. Found one, but killed it by accident while I was trying to kill these mammoths. Oh. Well, I killed it. Then spent all night building this Captain Fat Dog trap for this level 135 snow owl. But I must have done something wrong, and it escaped. Ended up chasing it into the wastelands to knock it out, where literally everything wanted to kill me. I ended up just having to lead these Rexes away, and named our new snow owl Hedwig. Now, back to try again for a mana. Found one, and trapped it once when these wolves attacked. Then led them off a cliff, and trapped it again when all this started going down. It was a real mess, and darn it, my mana escaped again. I dealt with the madness and then managed to trap one for real later that night. It took just a few tranks, and it was mine. Day 76, and I found another yellow drop on the way home. But this super trike came out of nowhere and absolutely demolished it. Italia healed up, and we got our revenge before we headed back home with Hedwig and our new mana, which I ended up naming Frieza. I used Jack to grab some fiber, and then we headed out to blow off some steam. Frieza's freeze breath was a lot of fun, but its stamina just made me sad. So I didn't stay out long and headed back to base to open some gotcha crystals. Yes! Looks like Christmas came early and I got exactly what I wanted. A Mastercraft long neck with almost 300% damage. Went out the next day to celebrate with M84 by killing some corrupt. Switched out to Marvel for a bit before I spotted this 125 Therizina. I figured it would be useful to have and a perfect opportunity to test out this new rifle. Chased it all over the wasteland and even had to deal with this corrupted reaper before finally knocking it out. Yes. Out of bounds, that is. Oh god. Oh god. Are you serious? I was trying to figure out a solution when this craziness happened. Well, so much for that. Back at home, day 80, and hatching some more RG eggs. I had been breeding the RGs every chance I got, so I had several eggs to hatch. Some of these were Rios, and the rest were Italias. You could definitely tell which ones belonged to Italia. I was looking to get a male and female, both with Italia's health and melee stats. Then I could continue breeding them to have both the higher stats every time on every egg. And then hopefully, I would eventually get some mutations. Spent the rest of the day gathering stone for the gotchas, and then out gathering metal. But this was a special day to gather metal. They had added the auto swing for the Anki. So now I didn't have to get off my bird and ride the Anki to gather metal. 
He could just fly around and let him swing. Hatched more eggs the next morning and then went out to try a blue drop with the Rexes. Don't bite that. They were a bit rowdy and I was nervous even on this blue drop about not being able to fly away if I needed to. This is just gonna be a mess. I was riding Marvel and ended up chasing my tail with these corrupted raptors. If I hadn't had Cruella and Orexa with me, I don't know if I could have gotten them all. Ended up staying close to them for the rest of the drop, and we made short work of the other way. That night, I named the male and female Argies with the best stats, Peppermint and Spearmint, then organized and named the rest after the other ARC YouTubers I got to collab with on the Last Man Standing video. Got this fabulous journeyman torch from a gotcha crystal I just had to test out. Then spent the rest of the day searching the wastelands for a male Rex, but they were all too weak. Ooh, you're cool looking. Got our first mutated Archie and named it CJ, then hatched this snow owl egg. Aww. It was only like the cutest thing ever. Cuddles. Spent the rest of day 83 killing stuff to try to level up the Argies before learning on day 84 that they could actually get experience from in their cryopods. So I cryoed them all up and was ready to head out to the wastelands to get some experience. <gasps> oh, we got a mutation. <laughs> Just before leaving, I hatched this egg of purple mutated triplets. I might have been just a bit excited. Named them Joker, Oculus, and Thick before I headed out to the wasteland for some killings. Ended up spotting this level 70 male Rex and decided to tame it. Killed off his buddy and went to work. It wasn't the highest level, but it would do so I could start breeding my Rex. It didn't take long to take it down with my new Mastercraft long neck rifle. Yes. Fed it some prime meat and started gathering some berries to eat when this happened. Ended up just leading them away before coming back to check on my Rex. Then quickly hopped back on Italia before anything else could happen. Killed off both those Reapers through the non-existent Wasteland Night, and then started this blue drop. It was all going well until this meteor shower started. I decided to stick it out since we were already on wave 5, but it apparently was just not my day. Oh no! I survived the fall and we finished the drop before finally heading home. <sighs> Spent all of day 87 breeding Argies, and then named our new Rex Neves and introduced him to Cruella. Went out on day 88 and almost got Raz killed in this yellow drop. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. But with some spam healing and a bit of encouragement from my daughter, Don't give up. We made it through. Got some nice new flat gear and a sniper rifle. Stayed in the wasteland through day 89 and tamed up this male Rex, which I named Dora. Then spent the rest of the day making Argy Saddle. Day 100 was creeping closer and I needed 100 corrupted hearts to summon the Desert Titan. So on day 90, I headed out with M84 and we killed as many big corrupted creatures as we could find. It did some serious damage with its buff against corrupted creatures, but its health just wasn't up to par. We ended up on the run and switching off to our RG CJ. Continued our corrupt heart collection for a bit and then headed home to grab the rest of our RGs. We were getting quite close to our Desert Titan fight, so I figured it was about time we took the RG army out for some testing. They demolished pretty much everything they touched and we headed home the next morning to hatch more RG eggs. As I was taking them for a walk, this defense unit decided to attack, but Dora's got us covered. Good job, Dora. I knew I was going to need some Sarko skins to battle the Desert Titans, so I spent the rest of the day out with Frieza gathering those. I was nervous, but it was time to start gathering some fire talent. Took some of my best Argies to this place by the sunken forest and let out wyverns one by one. I managed to kill three of them before this happened. Uh oh. I was fully committed and figured we'd kill it any second, but my stamina ran down and it just went downhill from there. Yes, oh. Well. I lost a couple no names, then TDS, Swarks, and Aztec all bit the dust. No. They were dropping like flies. Ah. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose them all. Passive. Follow me. I somehow managed to lead the rest away before collecting the saddles from the fallen. Cryoed up what remained and went home defeated. That was a pretty serious blow to our RG army, so I spent the entire next day breeding all of the RG pairs I had and hatching eggs. Day 95 and it was time for revenge. I took my new sniper rifle out to test on that wyvern that killed all my Argies and then finished it off with Italia. It ended up actually being a lot easier just to fight the wyverns with one Argy. Turns out if you just fly down as soon as you see the fire, you'll almost always miss it. I killed several more until I had all the fire talons I needed 
and then spent most of the next day gathering chitin so I could make enough RG saddles for our army. Oh, and it's almost Halloween, so I stopped to grab these scarecrows. Headed back home to organize the RG army. Named this one Lady, but I really left most of the rest unnamed because I wasn't sure how many would make it out of the titan fight. I had about 35 in all with varying levels and stats. Gave them all a good pep talk, and we headed off the next morning to the Desert Dome. I still needed to make it through the Desert Cave to get the artifact and summon the Desert Titan. But apparently, even with flyers enabled in caves, they aren't allowed in this one. Back through the wastelands we go. I'm gonna go grab those Rexes so we can take them through the desert cave. I could possibly try to run through on Frieza, but I didn't want to take any chances. After double checking the tribute requirements, I realized I didn't have enough Fire Talons or Sarko Skins. Somewhere I read you needed five, but you need ten of both. So, back to wyvern hunting it is. Got what I needed, then hunted more Sarko skins with Frieza before heading back to the desert. Stuck down some spike walls around our Argies. That's gonna be a really good wall. First thing on day 99, I headed into the desert cave with Marvel. Immediately ran into a rubble golem and chomped away forever before Marvel finally ate it. Everything else was pretty easy to deal with, but after fighting a couple more rubble golems, I had to stop and heal. Headed on for a ways more before I switched over to this Lady Rex I never named. I'm pretty sure I hatched it at some point, but forgot to record it. This Lady Rex might be new, but she sure was tough. We headed across this pretty bridge and then up this way and killed this mantis ghost. Health was getting low, so I switched over to Cruella, then headed through this water where a Capra was waiting at the end to try and surprise us. But the surprise was his. You can't reach me up here. Made one last switch to Marvel as I was getting closer to the end and then walked right past the artifact. Got to the tribute when I realized I had missed that artifact and headed back. That's a cool looking artifact. Wow. It was finally time and I went to switch to Frieza when this No, happened. are no. you kidding me? All that and I throw Frieza off a cliff right at the end. Switched off to the Lady Rex that I wasn't as attached to then headed down into the water to try to get it back. I wasn't sure what was down here, and it was a good thing I switched because these piranhas almost ate us. Apparently, Rexes can't swim backwards at all, but I found a way out of the water and then turned around and ate those fish. Finally got to Frieza and then cryoed up the Rex before heading back up top to the tribute. It was finally time at the end of day 99 to summon the desert type. Well, let's do it. It teleported us back to the desert dome, and I watched for the titan to start spawning in. I chickened out and ran off to my Argies before waiting for it to come all the way in, cryoed up the mana, and then hopped on Italia before calling all the Argies to follow. I left a couple behind and placed a bed just in case anything went wrong, but I had about 10 parachutes in case I got dismounted, so hopefully I wouldn't die. This is it. All or nothing. Headed straight in to attack and hoped I had my whistles right. Clearly, I did not because they didn't attack and just kept following me. Had a close call with some lightning. Oh, no, 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 no. Then finally got something right and they headed in to attack. You guys are gonna get it? Yeah, we got it now. Things seemed to be going well and I had left a male and female back at base just in case. The RG army was doing some pretty serious damage. I was kicked back on a cliff to watch when I started getting a bit antsy because I couldn't see the damage numbers. So I headed in and some of them started following me again. Oh no, why are you guys not attacking it? Go attack it. Go attack it. Everybody. Like this target. Go get it. Now they're going. The Desert Titan fight ended up being surprisingly easy, and I was never in any danger beyond that first lightning strike. It didn't take long before our Argies had brought it all the way down to a quarter of its health. Oh, it's over. We got it. Got the best Argies ever. Yes! Yes! Don't eat it! Don't eat it! Stop! I called off the Argies and landed them nearby before heading back to get the Dermis of the Titan with a taxidermy tool. Um, it just ate my bird. Italia fell through, but I got the Dermis, then hopped off in the water so I could grab Italia to harvest it. Made it back home on day 100 and placed our new trophy. Celebrated with a quick dance and placed some pumpkins before heading out to tame one last creature. Not counting the mech and scout, I had tamed every extinction creature in this 100 days except for a gas bag. So I trapped this cutie and knocked him out before this corrupted Carno tried to sneak up on us. He finished taming and I cryoed him up and took him home. Named him Bugs and spent the rest of our hundred days joyriding around. As our hundredth day ended, I shot off some fireworks and tried to get some cool camera shots for you guys. It may be the end of this hundred days challenge, but with Lost Island right around the corner, there's plenty more to be excited about. Don't forget to leave a like and comment to let me know what you want to see next. Bye!